not necessarily storing it all in one place, is doing the analysis on it to find redundancies and insights that can be used to guide care going forward. Um, so I think that is one potential use case where not necessarily storage, but some kind of a compilation and analysis of the different data sources can be valuable. The question that I have for you guys is, I would like to get your perspective on a B2B use case of an exchange of tokens to optimize capacity utilization between providers and payers. Or negotiation of contracts, smart contracts between providers and payers. Um, and I can elaborate on that further. I think it's a good question. Yes. Um, I don't think they're motivated to, uh, their contract negotiation is not a logical model. Uh, they, uh, the providers go in with a quadrant um, and they play a shell game based on their most expensive patient and uh, attempting to negotiate the contract based on that most expensive patient knowing they probably end up somewhere in the third quadrant. So it's, I mean, you can duplicate the, the shell game, and you can certainly put it up <laughs> as the smart contract. But I think um, I think there are easier use cases uh, than that one to start with. Whereas you start to build different uh, business incentives into this new network, then you could move toward that because they they would have less at stake. Uh, that's their that's their most important activity per year. All their revenue now is coming from that, and then they don't have any control over Medicare, so it's, it's, that's a tech one to start with. What about optimizing capacity utilization? Because a lot of times, a provider, a pair, uh, or a, a provider would have capacity that is not utilized, or they're overbooked. Yeah. So this is another one where the technology to solve that's been around for a really long time. It's uh, it has been a challenge of getting the different backend systems. Uh, and being able to train across the data to help them with just something as simple as giving up double booking. Uh, so there are companies out there now that are getting the hospitals, and the hospital systems, their EPIC installations are now getting to completion, so some of them actually are able to provide the data to do the sorts of analysis that Sam's talking about to make those solutions possible. Uh, and, and really, it's been it's been a process as opposed to uh, it not being technically possible. But it's um, but yes, that's something that they care a lot about. Um, and when they're standing up new facilities or or their variable uh, procedures where they're not sure about capacity, um, those are perfect examples of the kinds of things that what Sam's talking about can solve. And I'm certain that there are incentives that could be put placed around that for sure. Um, <clears throat> you, you've made an excellent point that the U.S. Uh, system is very fragmented, has a lot of wall gardens and a lot of <coughs> crazy incentives that aren't always logical. <clears throat> is there more incentive towards uh, smart contracts and automated payments in other countries that might have a single payer system? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, especially the single payer systems, and there are plenty of them around the world. I wouldn't be surprised if they lead us. Yeah. I don't know if we can follow them. Like, we, might be, we might be too messed up. Actually, I mean, I think um, we just spoke to, to an investor who has um, been in crypto since really early days, who is very global. Uh, and he's been talking to a lot of people here in the Valley, and he said the Valley is like, asleep. I mean, it's so far behind. Um, compared to the rest of the world, I mean, I, in Zug, uh, which is in Switzerland, they're kind of leading the way on many fronts where every single person now coming back to that identity issue, uh, it, they're going to have this unique identifier, essentially. Uh, now you're talking a very small population, it's a very small sort of deployment, if you will, and maybe that is a strength and they're able to do something innovative and dramatic. Uh, but to your point, there are multiple jurisdictions uh, that yeah. multiple jurisdictions in which they're embracing this. 
this is the, the, the new way, and they recognize the full potential. Again, not without challenges. I mean, the, the thing with US is that with any new technology, um, there are a lot of naysayers, there are a lot of people that are going to throw darts at it. The internet had that. You know, the internet came out and it was denigrated. Well, that's for illicit, illegal stuff. Why would anybody want to interact with the internet? And, you know, the first e-commerce cases that came out, uh, everybody was worried, oh my god, this is not secure, this is unsafe, why would I ever want to do things online? Uh, I'm so used to going to the retail store. So I mean, with every wave of disruption, there's going to be a lot of naysayers, there's going to be a lot of adoption uh, friction, barriers we have to work through. But I think that, you know, my hope, at least for healthcare, and healthcare is one of these really, really difficult areas, and I agree with Sam, those of us that are in healthcare are, not, are, are in it not because it's easy, but because it's interesting and challenging and we, we recognize there are multiple things we can solve. I think blockchain is really the, the future uh, when it comes to resolving a lot of the issues, and yes, we might have very slow on-ramp with this, and we might have to follow the lead of other areas of the world that are much more ahead than we are. Um, you know, and really study the, how they've implemented things or learn from their mistakes even. Yeah. So shall we do three last questions? Yeah, last, last question. Uh, oh, no, three. 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 Okay. Uh, so I have a question on the basic idea of uh, having healthcare records on the blockchain. So you said it's going to be like uh, permission blockchain, like private blockchain, uh, where you have like trust and nodes storing the records. Uh, but my question is like, why, why do we even need that? We can just have a bunch of providers like accept a common gateway and use decentralized databases. It's and not a technical question. <laughs> yeah, you, you are right. Technically, there's no need for a permission blockchain technically to do this, but it's a it's a how do you get the current uh, participants who, and I'll give you an example, why. So when uh, Pocketdoc first released its APIs to give you direct access to the insurance uh, EDI gateways, I was told that I was breaking the law. Uh, that it, uh, there was no possible way that could be HIPAA compliant. So now we have CAQH level four, which is the highest clearinghouse uh, certification, higher than ambiance changes that do most of the stuff. But just to just give you a sense of, it took a, it took us three years first to explain what an API was that wasn't called an API uh, to to let it, um, and we made it we made the calls we transformed the X12 API. We transform that into RESTful JSON, but it shows up to the EDI gateway exactly the way they expect it. We didn't change anything about what they do. They just receive the call from all the all the companies who use our APIs as if uh, it's the same clearinghouse they always got it from. We want to show up the blockchain in exactly the same way. Don't say, okay, we're just going to put you on an open blockchain and we put all the pointers to all these records and you're going to open up your stuff and it's going to be great. And it's technically fine, and, and no, it is really secure. Don't believe us. Trust us. We're the Silicon Valley. You know, we really, we, we really earned your trust. It, it just, they won't. So it's not a technical problem. Um, and you are right, but we got to take really baby steps. So the first baby step that we're taking with them is our permission change. I mean, like it looks like a lot of these companies are just want to use the blockchain pad to implement a decentralized database. I mean. Some are genuine, but... Uh, but yes, many are fraudulent, you are correct. Yes. They're not using it for a generalized database, they're using it to increase the value of their stock. Yeah. Yes, like on an iced blockchain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, second to last. So, I'm learning, and my question has to do with errors. Since I don't really understand the deep technicality of blockchain. Can you explain to me if there are pointers in one place, data